Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is the new Asus Chromebook Flip 436. And as you can see, as it says on the tin, it's got a 360 hinge. This is a flipping Chromebook. And actually, you know what? It's a flipping good Chromebook as well. So from the outside, it doesn't look a whole lot different to last year's Chromebook 434, which I really, really liked. It was one of my favorite Chromebooks of 2019. The bezels are slightly thinner, and Asus are saying that this is the world's lightest and thinnest 14-inch uh, Chromebook. But really, it's what's on the inside that counts here. And we've got new 10th generation Intel processors, uh, the i3, i5, and i7. And also, this is one of the first Chromebooks to actually tick all the boxes for Intel's Project Athena Innovation Program. I made a whole video about that. And basically, what that means is this is a pretty future proof laptop. We've got Wi Fi 6, uh, Bluetooth 5, we've got an SSD, a touchscreen, Intel's 10th gen processors, uh, fast charging through USB C. Now, in terms of pricing, the current Chromebook Flip 434 starts from about £500 or $550. And although I haven't had confirmed pricing for the 436, it is expected to jump up quite a bit, with two models coming out in late February for $800 and $1,000. Although the starting price is still $200 less than Samsung's newly unveiled Galaxy Chromebook, which starts at $1,000. I have to say though, it is a bit disappointing to see such a leap in price. I mean, for me, Chromebooks have always been about value for money and being accessible to those on a budget, particularly students. Also, a few more color options would have been nice. This fancy white design does look good, but apparently it's going to be limited to the higher end model, with the cheaper version going for a more basic silver. I'd love a rose gold or matte black. So quick fire new features, and starting with the screen, we actually get the same 14 inch 1080p IPS touchscreen as before, although the bezels are slightly thinner, we're looking at 85% screen to body ratio. And it's also pretty color accurate as well. We've got 100% sRGB. So if you are doing some photo editing in Lightroom, then actually you can rely on what you see on the screen. As I say, we also get the new 10th gen Intel processors, and that's paired with up to 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of SSD storage. We also get Bluetooth 5, Wi-Fi 6, although you will need a Wi-Fi 6 compatible router or router in the States uh, to take advantage of that. We also get a fingerprint reader built into the power button, which is a new feature on this, as well as stylus support. Port selection is a bit of a mixed bag because while we do get two USB-Cs, uh, which we also use for charging, so you could actually use your phone charger as well with this, although it would charge a bit slower, as well as a headphone jack and a micro SD card port. Unfortunately, they have actually dropped the full-size USB-A port, which we got on last year's Chromebook Flip, so you may need to buy an adapter if you are still using older USB-A peripherals. And somehow, even though this is more powerful than before, they've also managed to improve the battery life. Uh, Asus claim we'll get up to 12 hours from this, which is up from 10 hours on last year's model. Obviously, that's something I'll test properly in my full review, but Chromebooks are famous for being all-day laptops, and so I don't think, actually, in reality, it will be too far off that number. And we also get improved Harman Kardon tuned speakers, which do actually get very loud, although the quality isn't the best. It does start to get a bit tinny uh, the higher volume you go, but it's fine for watching the odd uh, movie or YouTube video, although generally I'll stick in a pair of headphones. And you can see as you've been watching this video that I'm just throwing it about a lot. And that's because it really is very lightweight. You really wouldn't feel this in a backpack if you're taking it to school or college. So I think for students, this could actually be a great option. And while for me, I probably wouldn't get a whole lot of use out of the 360 flipping hinge, uh, you can of course use it in stand mode, tent mode, or flip it all the way back and use it as a tablet, which feels a little weird because you have the keys on the back, uh, but it is nice and lightweight. And if you do buy a stylus to go with it, then you've got a nice RT doodly device as well. But what do you make of the new Chromebook 436? Would you consider buying something like this? Or do you think maybe if you are looking for a Chromebook, you'd go with a higher end, more premium Galaxy book? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And if you enjoyed the video and want to see more from me, then make sure you hit that little subscribe button below. And I'll catch you next time right here on the Tech Chat.